everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to try out an interesting little mission for my Shuttle Mark II to attach some radiators to a nuclear vessel in orbit around the Earth waiting to go to Mars. This is the same vessel that I had in my uh, NASA NTP uh, architecture videos. It I reverted it to the point where it was still in Earth orbit and we need to fix its cooling situation because it had too much boil off. One way I did that was go into the persistent file and add, make sure it had the right number of MLI layers. It, it always seems to want to get rid of MLI layers for various reasons. So made sure it had more MLI layers and then we're going to attach some radiators to help with cooling, hopefully. You know, it's a theory. Uh, so we're going to have the Kerbals use KIS to attach the radiators. It's not going to look perfect, but we'll see. So we've uh, got uh, ourselves targeting the target, and we're going to launch the Shuttle Mark II on a Blue Origin New Glenn because it's best suited for it, to be honest. Uh, it could launch in something else that's bigger. I've put it on the back of a Starship Super Heavy, uh, though... I, I didn't feel like people were entirely enthusiastic about that, but uh, I explained the logic, but uh, I don't know if people bought into it very much. Somebody had asked me to try out this ascent start time thing for as a, a it's an ascent descent add-on for MechJeb and claimed that it could help with trying to plot out the what you call it, uh, the capture around Mars and return from Mars. It doesn't seem to do anything like that. <laughs> I mean, uh, first of all, it, it wants me to engage Ascent Autopilot, which means it'll do it automatically. It's not for planning. I don't see anything here uh, that helps with actually planning the mission. I mean, uh, of course, I've got the other stuff that I've been using all along, but this particular thing does not seem to help me plan the mission ahead of time. Uh, I have to trust it to do it for me, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> I'm not going to trust, I'm not going to press engage ascent autopilot without knowing what it's going to do first. So, uh, nor am I going to use ascent guidance without knowing exactly what it's going to do first. And I guess uh, it added some stuff here too. But this is just a mess as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I want to see a plan. I don't want... I don't want. I know what I'm gonna do. I want to know what it's gonna do before it does it. Uh, that's one of the benefits to KOS. I wrote the darn script. I know what's gonna happen, or at least if something goes wrong, I know what I did wrong. So <laughs> one way or another, I I can't uh, debug MechJeb. I can debug my KOS scripts. So that's what I'll go with if I want an automated launch. So. Maybe I'm just too stupid to understand what the heck is going on with these tools, but uh, I think I'll just uh, continue as is for now. Maybe I'll experiment with that some other time. Uh, but anyway, we will launch and rendezvous with our nuclear vessel, so ignition. And launch. And we'll reserve fuel in the first stage. I think we can manage that. We'll see. Fuel's a bit heavy. It's not going up very fast right now. So the bay has some radiators. I'm going to lock this fuel just in case. For those who haven't been introduced to my Shuttle Mark II before, um, it's got liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in the bay to get to a high orbit. It has some room in the bay for other stuff, but not a whole lot if it's trying to get to a high orbit. Of course, it can just do low Earth orbit operations like a regular shuttle, and then it won't have much in the bay. Uh, it can just carry a regular cargo, but if it's going to a high orbit, it can't carry that regular cargo. We're just carrying basically four radiators in the bay plus a docking port. People have asked whether I'm going to add the Shuttle Mark II and the Shinkansen to the experimental mods pack or some mod pack and the answer is I haven't finished fiddling around with it. For instance in the case of uh, just today I added the crew hatch. Unfortunately I found out that the way I've done it with the decoupler here I can't add the crew hatch into the bay which is what I originally intended of course. Um, 
the decoupler is in the way blocking the exit so I might have to redo the decoupler and uh, change its collider somewhat so I've put the crew hatch on top instead for now but these are the kinds of things that need some fine tuning I also do want to figure out how to do control surfaces properly in Unity so that uh, we could add control surfaces to the folding wings which will again lead to proper control surfaces for starships for instance and I would like custom vertical stabilizers as well so there's there's other things so with the Shinkansen and this both uh, you have some work to do Shinkansen also does not have an exit crew hatch right now yeah in general with MechJab I want information not automation so uh, I really like the rendezvous planner and the pork chop plot and stuff like that. And if it can show me a plot to Mars, uh, that looks good. You know, I'll be happy. Uh, and if it could show me the round trip to Mars and back, you know, have that plot on the map, all the maneuver nodes laid out, you know, which I thought was what the person was saying, but I don't see how this does that. Uh, not with the buttons I get to press here. Launch into plane of target and engage ascend autopilot aren't happening. So, you know, th there's nothing here that shows me, okay, I'm going to be getting a plan on the map as opposed to a automated launch. So we'll reserve, uh, let's say 12 seconds of stage time for a barge landing or whatever drone ship landing, which is what the uh, New Glenn would do. Another thing I need to do for the Shuttle Mark II is create some sort of fairing for the back so that it can be mated properly. This is a little bit awkward with the payload adapter exposed like this. Sort of a custom adapter for it I feel is necessary. Okay, shutdown, separation, and ignition. And we are in space. A little bit high though. Okay, and we're getting rid of the launch escape system. A little bit tight. <laughs> a little bit tight there. Had me worried for a sec. We ought to make those a little bit more vigorous. The big benefit to New Glenn is this upper stage which is basically like an S4B to my mind. So, I mean, that's really handy. S4B is 6.6 .6 meters in diameter, it is 7 meters in diameter. Uh, these combined produce about 1,300 kilonewtons S4B. The, um, the, original, the Apollo one was 1,033, so these are a little bit upgraded, but a J2X would provide about the same thrust and about the same specific impulse. Actually, it's 1,400 uh, kilonewtons altogether. So, they have multiple ignitions, though not too many, just like the J2s would. So, yeah, it's sort of like an S4B. And I know what to do with those. And shut down 200 by 197. And... Uh, let's get the thrusters up there and in here, ready as we decouple. Okay, so we are ready to go. You can see in the bay, there's it's just very small radiators, because I didn't want to add too much extra mass. Each of these radiators is 0.28 tons after all. So it's a heavy addition. And then we have the docking port there. The docking port's on a piston because otherwise we won't really fit. Uh, well, you'll see if you forgot where that docking port is on the NTP tank. I just sort of slapped it on a little bit neglectfully. Okay, well, I think it's a little bit too sensitive right now, so we'll boost up and we'll come around and we should have an encounter in about 18 hours. It's all the way out there right now after all. Uh, please don't point directly at the spent stage. Let me temporarily target the spent stage. Okay, reignition. 
These are just BE-7 engines, four of them. Honestly, maybe I didn't need to put MLI layers on these tanks since we're pretty much going to expend them right here. Just within an hour of launch. It's methane and oxygen otherwise, and that's the OMS system, which is my ED-1 engines, not the, not the BE-7s. So... And also the RCS is Mephalox on this version of the Shuttle Mark II. Okay, well, 13.6 kilometers for now. Alright, let's go around. Okay, ignition. Okay, I think we should uh, wait the next 10 minutes so that we get that close approach. Okay, well, it's a pretty big ship. That's the hab, so the docking port's up there somewhere. Could do with some more light though. But we need to extend the docking port. So... And surely nothing ever goes wrong with Infernal Robotics. Now of course the docking port is just uh, to fix our position to the ship. It's not actually meant to pass Kerbals through because like I said the hatch is well, I mean, the hatch wouldn't matter too much, but anyway, but it's not meant to pass Kerbals through in this case. So yeah, you can see how flush the docking port is to the hab. That's why we need an extendable docking port on this side, otherwise our bulk will definitely get in the way. And also the Kerbals won't be able to exit through the upper hatch. I hope I've got that configured right. Okay... And we've docked. Okay, so that has happened. Now let's see. Newton Kerman is our. I thought I had. Oh, that that's in the hab. No, I don't. I want. I had the orange peoples, but the cameras that. Wow, Jeff has some stubble. Cameras are really close. Okay, well, where did the camera go? All right, well, the hatch works. That's good. Uh, next thing that has to work, we have to... Uh-oh. I had a drill in. I put it in the seat. Wait. Um. Oh, come on. I totally... I put it in the seat. Can we... No, we can't... We can't be detached without a tool. Okay, well, uh, hmm, I wonder if there's a way to add a tool to the inventory surreptitiously from the... This has become a, a, a whole thing where I edit the persistent file, but uh, I guess that might be a little bit easier than trying to launch this again. Okay, I think I successfully snuck a electric screwdriver or drill into Bill's inventory. Let's see. Indeed, hopefully that is all correct. Okay, Bill EVA again. I did expand the volume of the Kerbal inventories for ease of use. Let's put it that way. Let's see, grab. But it's still only enough to carry one of these radiators at a time. Does that seem like it's attached in any sort of reasonable way? No, not really. <laughs> right, it's, it's a skew, isn't it? Let's see. About there. Um... Well, that's pretty good. That's not bad. Now, they didn't have any radiators on the plan. Well, of course, they only have one slide to explain everything. Uh, but probably the radiators would wrap around radiators around the tanks, not extendable ones like these. 
So basically like the radiators on like the Apollo service module or Dragon's trunk, for instance. That said, they sort of painted the tanks orange, so <laughs> it's not a traditional radiator color. Basically in line with the Kerbal and then in line with that, so around here-ish. Hopefully. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. Again, I don't know if this is going to help. Maybe my adding MLI layers back on will do the trick. So we'll get two on this tank and two on the back tank. This one. Not on the middle t uh maybe we should do the middle tank and not the back tank. The back tank we can have drain first and so it'll be expended for sure on uh no maybe not for sure, but probably on exit from Earth SOI. Okay, let's try it here. Just have to eyeball it, I guess. No, oh, no, that's definitely not the same. Well, it's not a very fine rotation that they have there. Let me do shift rotate. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> uh... No, actually, since I grabbed it with it extended, it stayed extended. Oh, close enough. <laughs> well, at least one person's gonna hate me for that. Uh, oh, I'll probably hate myself. Okay, all right, all right, let me fix it. Or try to fix it. Whoa, that was a different noise. Everything okay? All right, I don't know, but I guess it's fine. All right. Probably if I turn the ship, it'll look weird or something. Last one. Okay, let me try and position the Kerbal in the roughly appropriate location in line with that. Okay. Attempt number one. What? Cannot deploy while stowed. Well, I'm getting the feeling that's probably going to be tilted wrong. Let me see if I can grab it. Eh, we'll leave that one. We'll see that one's busted. <laughs> I've had enough of these radiators. Uh, board? I need to figure out why there's no grab over there. Okay, well, we need to get the little shuttle back to a lower orbit now. Oh, wrong thing. Uh, what? Waste heat, uh-oh. Is this radiator not attached? I think one of the radiators is not properly attached. Oh, it's that one. Okay, you know what? We'll just have one pair. <laughs> All right, emergency EVA bill. Okay, that's as close as I'm going to get it right now. Oh, oh there's a grab. Now it gives me a grab. Okay, board. All right. So, as I was saying, let's get the shuttle back to a low orbit. We don't need to get all the way down. Is that not retracting? Uh, it seems like my extendable docking port is busted. Yep, extending docking port is busted. Well, Bill. 
Uh, those got a lot of work out here. 30 VA. Okay. Let's see. Can you fit that docking port? Ooh. Just putting the docking port in imparted some velocity to the shuttle. It's now spinning around. Uh, quickly, can you... Uh-oh. Okay, uh, back to the shuttle, please. Uh, that's not the shuttle at all. Uh, at least there's no floating radiator. Okay, kill rotation, please. I don't know if he can fit the piston into his inventory at the same time. We'll see. Nope, just too much. Okay, um, let me see. Jeb's inventory. Let me just plop that docking port in there. And now... Got it. All right. Okay, grab and board. Okay, well, partially successful. Not exactly what I, how I wanted it to go, but it's it's better than nothing. Okay, so now we're going to uh, get ourselves into a atmospheric periapsis and let it break. That's what the wings are for, after all. And we'll see whether it can do that properly. It does have some fuel to finalize its return to lower orbit but we probably we need definitely need some help with that so uh, we'll just do that apoapsis back at the ntp test bed which is i guess what i really should call it so rename vessel ntp test bed ASB Interstellar knows about power. Waste heat management, I don't know, utilization 100%. Are you guys really? Cooling 41%, it says. I don't know what that means, really. 45% there. Liquid hydrogen is there. There is some boil off point. Uh, otherwise, it'd just say zero instead of 0, 0.00. So it's not like we've eliminated boil off completely. The only issue is, hopefully, we're not going to have any weird superfluous boil off. Oh, of course, it'll be on the nighttime side. <laughs> of course, it would be. The MH and Mon 3 are actually in the wings for the wing thrusters in case we wanted to use those to control roll because this doesn't have ailerons or anything. So. It has extra RCS for that purpose, wingtip RCS. But that's more for later, not the initial bit, not for this kind of error breaking. Well, let's see if I've chosen wisely as far as periapses. Well, everything's growing red. We're at 86 kilometers, 85 kilometers. That's the body, so we definitely don't want to lose that. We are slowing down. And, well, that's the cabin, <laughs> yeah. Those are the wings, so. But we are going up now, so no problem there. The only thing is I would like it to be a very quick orbit so that we don't stay too long in the radiation belts now. Before the height of our orbit was okay, it would be out of the radiation belt. So the apoapsis, which is where we hang out the most in our orbit, of course, is well out. But this time, probably the apoapsis will be inside the radiation belts. We'd like it as low as possible. If we could do a lower periapsis initially, that would be helpful. But uh, we saw things going red, so... So, 
you can see we went from that orbit, which is the orbit of the NTP testbed, to this orbit now. But we are still going pretty fast, so going from that orbit to this orbit is not a whole lot of velocity burned off. We need to get rid of a whole lot more than that. We're slower now, so we can go lower without burning up, but not probably not too much lower. We're delaying the exit for the NTP testbed as well, so that's another thing. It's going to be leaving later than it did in the NTP architecture videos. I'm going to try 77. Okay, 90 kilometers, 89. Gotta pitch up a little bit because the periapsis is going up. I'll try and get some more drag here. Let's see, control wise, we seem to be okay. Okay, well, that pass brought us down to this orbit. I think it was a bit too conservative. Okay, coming in at 72 kilometers this time. I also have to be careful that we don't end up coming straight down. That would not be our intention. Okay. Needing a little bit of RCS to hold the pitch like this. And we're not going to hit 72 kilometers. Your periapsis is coming up, even though we're trying hard to pitch up to present as much drag as we can. We'll pitch down now, we've passed periapsis. Also, our apoapsis is not that high anymore. Okay, as we exit the atmosphere again, that'll be the last air breaking pass. We are at a 1 hour and 44 minute orbit. Looks like that. And we'll just do the rest manually to get into a safe position. And perhaps uh, to a location where it can rendezvous with a depot. That's not a depot, but we could find a depot. We could launch a depot. Might need a depot of food, water, and oxygen as well. Also, need methane. Okay, so 294 by 238. And we've got a little bit of fuel left to dock with whatever we need to refuel with. I mean, of course, again, we don't have a depot here, so we will have to think about that. Maybe I should launch one. But... I need to uh, send the NTP testbed on another try to Mars. We'll see if it's properly configured for that. And again, we're a little bit later than we were last time, so that probably changes things. But this has just been a little bit of fun with the Shuttle Mark II. I've made so many little things, so I need to put them to more use here and there. See what they're made of, if you will. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.